Robert. Uh, hello, good to see you. Thank you, thank you, Roy. That's right, right. that's nice a bit better. How are you doing? Uh, How we get up? A bit better than I, I was. I've been a little bit unwell, but I'm, I'm a bit better now. Thank you for asking. That's good. That's good. I know when we spoke on the phone the first time, you were not so well that day, so... Yeah. That's I, good, really. I think I've got over it. I think, I, I think I've got over it, so that's uh, good. Very good. Well, thanks for getting together last time. It was a nice, enjoyable discussion. Um, quite a weighty one, which was nice to get into the uh, some of the details. Mm -hmm. um, I think we came to the conclusion that... Um, the faithful and discreet slave, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the faithful and discreet slave, as far as you're concerned, is not um, an entity like a governing body. That's, I think, how you perceive it. And also, I think you said at the end, it's not necessary to belong to an organised or an organisation. Have I got that right? Um, your Watchtower magazine... The 15th of November, 1981, page 21 says, And while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. So, as I understand it, the Watchtower is saying you must go to an organization for salvation. I don't accept that. As for Matthew um, 24, 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant? That's contrasted in verse 48 with an evil servant. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, it's a contrast between a faithful servant and an evil servant. It's simply a parable. And it's called a parable in Luke twelve forty one, the parallel yeah. account. It's just called a parable. So yeah. this isn't some institution like the papacy that God is instituting for all eternity. Um, it's just a parable. That's, that's how I would see it. Yeah, okay. I think that's that's kind of how I felt, you felt, at the end of our conversation last time. So I, I had to think about about that, and I thought Acts 15 would help. It, would, it doesn't necessarily tell us Jehovah's Witnesses have a governing body based on this. I do accept that. I'm not, that's not really my point. It was, it was just to try and show in Scripture that when they had this particular issue with circumcision, there was a centralised way, if that's the right word to use. I mean, I used the word governing body back then if you want, but there was a way to resolve this matter by going to a, a group of people, which was the apostles and the, the elder men. So what, I'm, what, I, what I thought, if, if by looking at Acts 15, which you'll probably know very well, you're, you're obviously a very good Bible student, it's just to sort of explain, not from Matthew 24 about the faithful slave, but from Acts 15, um, some justification scripturally for having a governing body or whatever word you would prefer to use, you know. Um, the, the, so, the, the text uses the phrase three times, apostles and prophets. Yeah. So in verse 2, Acts 15, verse 2, Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and, el sorry, apostles and elders, not apostles and prophets. Apostles and elders about this question. Then Acts 15, 22, then it pleased the apostles and the elders with the whole church. And then in verse 23, they wrote this letter by them, the apostles and the elders and the brethren to the brethren who are, the, who are of the Gentiles at Antioch. There's no reference anywhere in the New Testament, nowhere in Acts 15, to a governing body. Anywhere. But yeah, if agree, you can show me that, I stand corrected. It says apostles and elders. Apostles yeah. we don't have today. The word apostle means one who's sent. And in the context of these apostles, the 12 apostles, it means people who witness Christ's resurrection and accompanied Christ for his ministry from the baptism of John until his resurrection. That's Acts 1, 21 to 23. So we don't have apostles today. Catholicism is based on the doctrine that you have apostles today. Most of the cults are based on the idea that the apostles 
um, continue into our own day. Mormonism, for instance, um, the extreme Pentecostals, um, and a host of other weird groups. A Seventh Day Adventism, I believe that Ellen G. White is some sort of a prophet or apostle. Um, it's all based on the idea that you had apostles in the first century, we have apostles today, so we can forget about the Bible, we've got to follow the living apostle or prophet here on earth today. That's Mormonism, Seventh-day Adventism, that's extreme Pentecostalism, and it all comes from Catholicism, where the Pope is the successor of Peter, and it's a, it's a load yeah, of well, I, I would agree with some of what you say, wouldn't disagree with some of that, and um, we don't have apostles, apostles today, agree with that. It was more of a how the decision to encourage and strengthen the congregations, which were obviously being formed at that time, how that decision process was made about circumcision, it was that that I wondered if we could OLS round and sort of agree, if possible, how that process of sending out instruction at the end of Acts 15, how that happened and we're trying to follow the same pattern. So I agree. You can't. The body you can't. It's, it's impossible. Because in Acts 15, in verse 3, verse 22 and verse 23, it is the apostles and the elders. Yeah. We don't have apostles today. There are no apostles like St. Paul or St. Peter or St. John today. Right. Because to be an apostle, you have to witness the resurrected Christ. If there are apostles yeah. today, we should all be Catholics. Because the Catholics are the first to come up with this idea that the apostles never died out. When Peter died, he handed it on to some other bloke. And now Pope Francis is the 260-something successor of Peter. Acts yeah. one twenty one to 23. Could I just read it? Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two, and in the end they chose Matthias. So to be an apostle in the sense of the twelve apostles, you have to witness Christ's resurrection and accompany Christ from the baptism of John until you saw his, the resurrected Christ. Now that doesn't apply to Pope Francis, that doesn't apply to the head of the Mormon church. It doesn't apply to rich Pentecostal TV preachers who claim to be apostles or flying around the world in private jets. It doesn't apply to the head of the Seventh-day Adventist church. We don't have apostles in that sense today. They died out. So the apostolic authority in Acts 15 is not with us today. We have elders today, but we don't have apostles. So in verse 2 then, was it just the apostles who made up this group? No, it was apostles and elders. Right. So we, we both agree there are still or can be elders today, even if there's not apostles. I think we agree, can we agree with that? Yes, yes. Okay, so the governing body clearly was enlarged. I'll, I'll drop the term governing body. I shouldn't use that. No, it's, 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 not, it, it, it's, it's not found anywhere in Scripture. No, governing so body applies to the legal representative under American law that runs a company or runs a charity? It doesn't anymore, just let me clarify that, the governing body, any of, when, in the past, um, those on the governing body were directors and linked exactly to, as you state, the legal entity. That isn't the case anymore. The governing body are not um, directors. That, that was separated some years ago. So there are um, Jehovah's Witnesses who are, you know, directors of all that kind of legal structure, but they're not the governing body anymore. So that, that, that link isn't there anymore. That's a, that's so that, a misnomer. It's kind of irrelevant. That, it's that, irrelevant to yeah, I don't think it's really relevant. That was done for legal reasons. The governing yeah. bodies still run the Watchtower Bibles and Tract Society of New York and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Other people are put in as directors so that yeah. if they're taken to court, they're supposed to be the full guys. But deep yeah, down, so everyone we, knows that it's the governing body who are working under the um, direction of the shareholders. Well, the governing body are definitely taking the lead. So I agree with that totally. The legalistic thing, you know, I have a slightly different view on that. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'd agree with the most of what you said. So if we both agree in verse 2 that 
there were apostles and elders, would it be the same today that elders, whoever they may be, could follow this pattern at least in Acts 15? So just say that again. So I agree with you, there are not any apostles today. I agree mm -hmm. with that. But there could be elders. We agree with that in verse 2. So there could be yes. elders today. So could elders today, whoever they may be, wherever they are, could they follow the pattern in Acts 15 in order to send out letters of encouragement and direction to keep the congregation of Christians together under a... Yes, so, yes, yes. Um, elders can elders can do that, but there are elders in lots of different churches. Catholics have elders, Baptists yeah. have elders, Seventh-day Adventists have elders, Pentecostals have elders, Jehovah's Witnesses have elders. They have absolutely no authority at all. They've got no authority to make up doctrine or to make up new teachings from the Bible. Only the apostles can do that. Right. Elders today, just, just hold on, elders today have no authority. If you're an elder, you have no authority over me. The only authority over that. me is the Bible. I so, totally agree So if I were to go, let's say I were to go to the local co-op, I wouldn't do this, obviously. Let's say I were to go to the local co-op and I were to go and steal a bottle of wine. The only authority you have as an elder is to tell me, Robert, the Bible says you shouldn't steal. That's in the Ten Commandments. It was repeated by Jesus in the New Testament, I forget where. So that is part of the moral law that stays today. Christians shouldn't steal. That's your authority. You have no authority to come up with some new strange doctrine, as, say, the many elders in other churches do. All you, could, all you can do is repeat what the Bible says. I, 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 I don't believe today, and I've fallen out with somebody um, recently. I told this person not to contact me again. I got fed up of them um, phoning me up for an hour, hour, hour and a half, and just lecturing me on how to live my life. And I said, just leave me alone. I just don't want to know anymore. Okay. There is no such thing as a one-man band pastor who has authority over me. OK, I once went to a Pentecostal church many, many years ago and the pastor's daughter came up to me and she said, I have authority over you. Now, this is a young girl in her early 20s. I'm now 62. This would have been quite some time ago. She probably hasn't even read the Bible through once. As far as I was concerned, her father, the pastor, was biblically illiterate. And, you know, she was far more so. People have no authority over you at all. The only thing you can do if you have a church position is to say the Bible says this and this and this. So if I were to go to the co-op and steal bottles of wine, you're at liberty to tell me that the Bible says I shouldn't steal. God doesn't want me to steal. That's the extent of your authority. You have no authority at all to invent new scripture or to invent new doctrines unless you can show me where that is a part of being a church elder or a church leader, and it, it isn't. I agree with pretty much everything you've said, Robert. I agree. We're, we're on the same... We, we, we both feel the same about that subject. I don't have any dispute right. about what you're saying. That uh, any man or woman does not have authority over somebody else, but the Scriptures do. I'm totally with you. I don't, I don't have any dispute on that. We, yeah. we agree. Um... Okay. So this, this, this has been the problem at times with the governing body when they have said things which have turned out not to be correct, whether that be prophecy mainly or other things. So they've made mistakes at times. They've run ahead or they've, they've erred in doctrine or they've tried to you know, say something that's not correct and, and time has shown that to be the case. So they've got better at that. But, it, but I, I totally agree with you. I, I'm with you on that. And, and for me to, to be a Jehovah's Witness and come to you and say that, I hope that kind of helps yep. a little bit. Not getting my head buried in the sand and think, the governing body, tell me what to do. Do you know where the scripture talks about um, we're not masters over your faith? Um, I'm just trying to find it. Um, there's a scripture somewhere. 
obviously we're just trying to find it, but the governing body are not masters over our faith. They, they are there to support, encourage. Yes, I believe they can unify us all in certain clearing up certain things, but they, they're absolutely right. They have no authority beyond Scripture. I totally, I totally agree with you. So that's at least something we've got common ground on. Okay. Um, the, so the, the point of Acts 15 was, yes, I agree there's not apostles anymore, but you know we could have elders today. And as long as elders do not go beyond the scriptures, then would you agree with me that certain elders could act, could act in the way that Acts 15 states where you've got an issue, a question, in this case it was circumcision, and if you look down Acts 15, I think it's just James used a verse from Amos where he talks about... Um, a certain scripture in Amos, I'm trying to think where it is now, just speeding down. Yep. He uses scripture. Verse 16. Peter, yeah, Peter and obviously Paul at that time, they bring this experience that actually God is giving the Holy Spirit to Gentiles without them being circumcised. So those reports plus scripture, plus Holy Spirit, I would add, help the corrugations to make a decision, help the apostles and older and elders to make this decision and what's interesting is that they sent out a letter to all the congregations and the congregations rejoiced over the encouragement and they then followed that direction and it was kind of set then that circumcision is not required so all i'm trying to say is that the pattern in acts 15 if it's followed, has a scriptural basis, but I no. totally agree with you. No. Well, just, just let me finish. I totally agree with you that any, if any elder was to go beyond the scriptures and start writing things to the brothers and sisters that were not scriptural, that is wrong. Totally agree with you. But that there is, in the Bible, much evidence to show that this is the way Jesus Christ wanted the corrugations to start to operate by respecting those who take the lead. So if you went to Hebrews 13, for instance, if I could... If where, I could where is the phrase respecting those who take the lead? Well, in Hebrews 13, so let's go there. Okay. Um... Maybe that's a phrase within the New World Translation. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. So, Hebrews thirteen seventeen. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch for your souls as those who must give a account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Um, the word... Um, Gosh, Pythio, uh, 3,982, 3, obey, Pythio, means to fully persuade. So it's not blind obedience. No, it's, I agree. It's not to blind fully obedience. persuade. And it's obviously to persuade from the Bible. Yeah, and, I agree with that as well. Yeah. And, and also, those who rule over you is a plural. One thing I'm very okay. strong on, and one thing I fell out with this, this person, um, was that I'm very insistent in the Bible has a plurality of leaders, not one. It would be one area where I would um, agree with um, some aspects of the Jehovah's Witness system of uh, governance. I don't believe in a one-man band pastor with a sort of group of um, spineless, weak elders who just do what the pastor tells them to do. Um, I see churches in the first century being run by a plurality of unpaid elders. And yeah. the ones who were financially supported were the travelling missionaries, such as the apostles. Um, yeah. But... 
I'm just looking at this this word obey, pithio. It's a passive middle voice. It means to be won over by persuasion. And the context is verse 7. It's the preaching of the word of God. So it's not people's opinions. It's those who use the word of God accurately. And it's through the word of God that people are persuaded. Uh, Hebrews 13, 7. Remember those who rule over you. Again, it's a plural, not a singular. It's not a one-man band pastor or a one-man band priest or a one-man band pope. Those, sorry, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Um, the middle voice is something I don't quite fully understand. I think it's, um, no, I won't actually comment on that because I need to actually find out some more about the middle, the middle, the middle voice. Mm. Just going back to 17, verse 17, there is this thought that as long as elders, if we could use that term, are using the scriptures correctly and are persuading based on scripture, it does indicate that there is a need for the congregation to beg that um, that person or persons, plurality, I get that, who have authority to use the scriptures as you said if you went in the corp and you stole some booze mm -hmm. um the elders would say to you that's not correct roy or robert if you carried on doing that and still carried on after being admonished not to then if you look at you know paul talks about expelling ones in the congregation in corinthians for a different matter so there is there is a structure there agree that allowed yeah 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 so, obviously so, i mean it's 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 obvious but the authority is in the bible what tends to happen is most religious groups when they become organized religions and you have a hierarchical system with one person at the top of the pyramid and i'm not saying all religions do that but many of them do they'll have one person at the top of the pyramid what tends to happen is you end up following this guy at the top rather than the Bible. The Bible gets put to one side and you end up, I mean, in, in my background is in Pentecostalism. You end up following the pastor's vision. What is the pastor's vision? It's just an idea that he's come up with. It's a series yeah. of ideas that, you know, we've got to have a new church gym. We need to have new musical equipment. The pastor needs a bigger house or a bigger car. Um, the pastor's son is called by the Holy Spirit to be the uh, associate pastor with a big salary and a, a house and a car and so on and a pension. And this is the pastor's vision. And what you tend, not in every case, but in some cases with these pastor's visions, the same thing in Mormonism, the Seventh, Seventh Day Adventism, Christadelphians, Assemblies of Yahweh. You're not actually following the Bible. You're following your leaders. And what they say is their pastor's vision has got nothing to do with the Bible. It's just a creation of their own thing. And if the pastor wants to have a bigger house or a bigger car or build a church gym or a ch church swimming pool. OK, there's nothing in the Bible for or against that, but let him pay for it himself. But what tends to happen is a burden is put on people and poor people in the pews are told, well, the pastor's got this vision. You must support the pastor's vision. You know, the pastor needs a bigger house, a bigger car. We need a church gym. We need a church swimming pool. Pastor's son should be given a very well-paid job, even though he, you know, has no theological training. Uh, and, and this sort of thing is what I've come across in my own background repeatedly. People come up with visions and prophecies and ideas which are not found in the Bible. They're just people's ideas. And again, if if a pastor wishes to pursue something he's at liberty to do that but he's not at liberty to try and put me on a guilt trip and make me feel that i'm some sort of wicked sinner because i'm not supporting financially his vision just as i don't support the pope's vision you know to build some new cathedral when i was a kid uh, we went to barcelona to see the um uh, sangria family i think it's called the gaudi cathedral which they've been yeah. building for over a century. It's truly stunning. 
OK, but I don't have to give a penny of my money to support this. I don't I don't have to give these people anything to support it. If it's if it's the Pope's vision to build this cathedral, then let the Pope pay for it. And the same thing with the ideas that the Mormons have or the assemblies of Yahweh or extreme Pentecostal groups. If they have some idea they're going to do this, that or the other, let them go for it. But it's nothing to do with me. Unless you can show me a scripture that says I have to support some pastor's vision or I have to support the assemblies of Yahweh's idea to, to build this or that building or I have to support the Mormons' idea that they need to build a new new temple in Timbuktu. Unless you can show me a verse that says that, then I can totally, utterly and completely ignore it. It, 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 it has no authority over me at all. The only thing I'm subject to is the scripture. I'm not subject to some man. And I, I'm personally of the opinion that one of the great wickednesses of religion is it often starts off with the best of intentions. Um, look at Methodism. You know, if ever there was a man who God used, it was John Wesley. Um, he, he was a very godly man. He spent his life preaching the gospel and he died when he was very old because he tried to reconcile two Christians who'd fallen out. And so in the driving rain, he went on horseback in his 80s between these two people to try and reconcile them. And he died of ex exposure. Now, what a godly man. And I have yeah. met two very godly Methodists in my life who I have the highest of respect for. But most Methodists you come across here in the UK uh, are a bunch of idiots. <laughs> so, you know, they start off with the best of intentions. Yeah. But over time, once you get an institution uh, and you get a system of hierarchy, a sort of pyramid system with some guy at the top, people tend to lose their focus on scripture and they end up obeying men. And th this, this happens to all religions. You, you know, the Brethren, yeah. the Calvinist, the Baptist, Mormons, Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholicism, Liberalism, Fundamentalism. I think it's worse amongst fundamentalist groups. They, they lose their vision. And rather than follow scripture and be subject to scripture, they allow themselves to be subject to men and to men's ideas. And these yeah. ideas of men have no authority over me at all. None. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I would do what you would do as well if I felt that any man or woman was trying to get me to do something that wasn't scriptural. I agree with you totally. Let, let me put this idea yeah. out then. It starts off with the best intentions. One person, you know, sort of taking the lead and then it ends up a disaster. Maybe I could put to you that as Jehovah's Witnesses were the opposite to that. We started off with one individual, a few individuals who were weighty in their presence and in their um, persuasiveness, but were scripturally wrong in many areas. But as time has gone on, what Jehovah's Witnesses have done is kept going back and back and back to the Bible and seeing the error of that particular course and improving in the way that they administer, you know, um, I don't want to say discipline, but administer an organisation. So that's how I look at it. I actually agree with you, Robert, very, very much. Mm -hmm. But I think what Jehovah's Witnesses have done is they've seen that danger and to some extent have done similar things because uh, Pastor Russell and Brother Rutherford wrote lots of stuff which, quite frankly, were their own opinion, were their own ideas and were nothing to do with the Bible at all. And I totally agree with you on that. But as things have gone on, Actually, our organisation keeps going back to the Bible and seeing the need to improve in this area. And I think, actually, we're getting nearer to this thought that, well, we have a governing body. I can use that term. They are not masters over our faith. They cannot and should not in any way ask us to do anything that is beyond Scripture. And I would feel like you if I felt that that was the case. So I think we kind of agree. I think we're, we're, we're very similar in the way we look at it. 
But I also, this is the, the bit where we probably disagree, I have to accept that if there is elders today who are given the responsibility to take the lead, they will make mistakes. And that will happen. And I've got to make a judgment personally as to whether those mistakes are within the remit the scriptures allow, such as the Apostle Peter, we know he made mistakes, or whether or not they've just left the scriptures and are just not being blessed by God. And my my feeling over the years is that I've looked at this subject constantly, so I'm very much like you, it matters to me, the details. I feel that as an organisation we're getting better and better at actually, when it comes to having men take the lead, it's more and more getting closer to the scriptures. So I would kind of say Jehovah's Witnesses were different. We are open to a lot of criticism, and I think we do learn from that. And I think we're getting better. So what I would, what I would, I'd love you to do is, as well as your determination to look at all the details which you do, is to look at some of the positives as well, modern day as of today, and see what we're doing today. Could, could I? Would, yeah. Could I just make an yeah. observation, please? The governing Absolutely. body. The governing body says of itself that it is neither inspired nor perfect. That's a quote. The governing body is neither inspired nor perfect. That's the Watchtower, February 2017, page 24, paragraph 12. Yeah. Now, I'm nothing to do with the Watchtower organisation. Mm. I understand that if you have an organisation worth about probably $80 billion, which probably the worth of the Watchtower, roughly. The Mormons and the Seventh-day Adventists, because they practice compulsory tithing, they're worth a lot more money. They're probably worth about $300 billion. So if you're going to form a successful religion today that's never short of money, um, <laughs> unfortunately, even though it's completely unbiblical, um, institute a policy of compulsory tithing and you'll never be short of money. Why do I need to listen to the governing body? It says it's neither inspired nor perfect. Because that's who Jesus Christ uses to take the lead and to make sure that the congregation is cared for, nourished and looked after. So Prove it. it is true. Prove so, it. Pr prove it. You said Jesus Christ says the governing body takes the lead. Prove that to me. Well, it's... It goes back to Matthew 24 about the faithful slave. but It's a parable. Yeah, I know. So we have a difference on that. So that's where I would go to one part. But also, if you look, as we've looked at Hebrews 13, there is a scriptural basis, not just Acts 15, but there is a scriptural basis for certain elders, but, use that term, elders, uh, oh, taking oh, the lead. But anyone can, lead. Any, anyone can use that. So, look... I could, someone could say to you, you are a person who's in rebellion to Jehovah God. You're a wicked, evil man because you're not faithful to God's prophet in Utah, the head of the Mormon church with his quorum of the 12 apostles. Then you knock on someone else's door. Hello, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, they say, you're a wicked, sinful man, Roy. Because our TV preacher, Kenneth Copeland, is a man of God. He's been anointed by God. God has chosen him. And he's appointing prophets today and apostles today. He's laying hands on people. You're not connected with us, therefore you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. All of this is, you know, the same thing with the assemblies of Yahweh, the Christadelphians. Yeah. Uh, I used to be a oneness Pentecostal, which is a very yeah. extreme form of the Pentecostal movement. All of these groups. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not too sure about the Christadelphians, but certainly um, it's extremely, it's taking over the Pentecostal movement around the world. Not just yeah. the oneness movement, but the, the NAR, New Apostolic Reformation. It's, it's infinitely bigger than Jehovah's Witnesses and, and Mormons combined. You've got yeah. millions of people who believe that there are apostles and prophets who they have to hold on to every word today. They, it, it's all bunkum. There is no such thing as apostolic authority today other than the writing of the New Testament, which is the testimony of the apostles. Because the, 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 no, New, Testament, the, the, the New Testament is the writings, it's the testimony of the apostles who witness Christ's resurrection. Who's, who's going to give me a better view of who Christ is? 
Pope Francis, who's never seen Jesus Christ but claims to be an apostle, the head of the Mormon Church, or the head of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, or some crazy Pentecostal preacher flying around the world in a private jet saying, tithe to me. None of these people have seen the risen Christ. They haven't accompanied Christ for three years. But the writers of the New Testament, um, the exception would be Luke and Mark, uh, who, who weren't apostles, but who accompanied apostles on their missionary journey. So what you're getting from Luke and Mark is the testimony of the apostles. That's why we follow the New Testament. Because if you want to know who Christ is, you don't look for some governing body today. You don't look for some Mormon prophet or some Mormon apostle or some Pentecostal preacher. If you want to know about Christ, you open the Bible and you read the words of St. Paul or St. James or St. Peter who accompanied Christ. So you get it first hand. No, I agree with that as well. I think we agree on a lot of things, actually. I don't disagree with anything. But there's no said. revelation of Christ today. There's no revelation of Christ today outside of the Bible. Now, if you ask me, do I believe that God can speak to people and guide people today? I do believe that can happen in rare occasions. Um, it's happened to me three times in 40 years, uh, twice verbally and once through a piece of graffiti um, but it was it wasn't giving some new revelation of Christ that no one else has got in church history. And it puts me, Robert Skinner, above everyone else and makes me superior to everyone else. It was for my own personal direction and my own personal conduct. Yeah. So, OK, so but there's there's no revelation of Christ. There's no revelation of the Christian gospel today outside of the New Testament, because the New Testament are the, well. are the writings of the apostles. And, and and those people who accompanied the apostles, uh, Luke and Mark, we don't know who wrote Hebrews. Maybe it was St. Paul, maybe it was somebody else. C can, you, can you see that? If you want to know yes, about Jesus, absolutely. you go to somebody who accompanied Christ, like St. Paul, St. Peter. You don't go down the road to some... Catholic Church where he lifts a piece of bread, hocus pocus domini nostris, hocus pocus, and he's telling you to listen to this guy in the Vatican called St. Francis because St. Francis doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just making up rubbish. He wears funny clothes to give himself authority. He's got a, a funny title. He calls himself Your Holiness, which is not exactly a very humble title. And you can go through all the other groups, whether it's the Pentecostal TV preachers or the head of the Mormon church or the head of the Seventh-day Adventist church or Assemblies of Yahweh, extreme Pentecostals. They're just giving themselves authority that they don't have. The only authority over me is the word of God. So that's I it. Totally agree. I agree. Okay. So could it be that those who are taking the lead are there for another reason, not for a new revelation? Not to give direction on a new revelation, but let's say uh, first Peter five verse two is where I'm going. Let's um because I've only got a minute left, let's log out and log back in, Robert. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, do you want to look at that? Okay. Do you want me to do that now or Yeah, because yeah. I've just got a minute left, so let's yeah. log back in. Thank yeah. you.